Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about a history of pumpkin art. And if you stick around, you can watch me try to carve a turnip. This video will cover early European settlers' obsession with pumpkins, the creepy origins of the jack-o'-lantern, and how pumpkin carving got so intense. Did you know pumpkins are indigenous to North America? According to the Wampanoag Language Reclamation Project, the modern word pumpkin comes from the Wampanoag word pompikin, which means grows forth round. European explorers first encountered the pumpkin in North America in the 1500s, and they quickly became obsessed. According to the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation, almost every early European explorer commented on the profusion of pumpkins in the New World. Columbus mentioned them on his first voyage, Jacques Cartier records their growing in Canada in the 1530s, Cabeza de Vaca saw them in Florida in the 1540s, as did Hernando de Soto in the 1550s. In the 1580s, Thomas Harriot, scientific advisor to the Roanoke expedition, realized early on that the multitudes of colors and shapes were actually quite similar in taste. He wrote, Several forms are of one taste and very good and do also spring from one seed. Captain John Smith described in 1612 how the Powhatans grew pumpkins near Jamestown. Pumpkins and related squashes were an indispensable part of the diet for Native Americans of all regions. The pumpkin started showing up in still life by European painters, like this one painted in 1625 by Juan van der Hamen, or Still Life with Two Jars and Two Pumpkins by Vincent van Gogh. In the painting Cinderella by Valentin Cameron Princep, the bright orange pumpkin stands out against Cinderella's ashy gray surroundings, suggesting hope for a brighter future. The pumpkin got its big debut in 1697, when Charles Perrault published Cendrillon la petite pantoufle de verre, better known as Cinderella. The rags to riches tale was already popular in Europe, but Perrault gave our heroine a carriage made of a pumpkin, probably the biggest vegetable Europeans could fathom at the time. The pumpkin went on to have a featured role in American folk tales like The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Pumpkins have always been valued for both their edible and aesthetic qualities. According to the Columbia Daily Tribune, over 98% of pumpkins grown today are used for decoration. Pumpkin carving falls into the category of folk art. Folk art usually has some sort of utility, like a carved spoon or an embroidered pillow, and contains specific cultural significance. In the case of a jack-o'-lantern, the point would be to light the way. But how did we get from painting pictures of pumpkins to making pumpkins themselves the canvas? The answer is the legend of Stingy Jack. Okay, this is the legend of Stingy Jack with a lot of creative liberties taken. Once upon a time, there was a fella named Jack. He was a real loser. Nobody liked him. He went drinking every day at the pub. One day, this vagrant walks into the pub and the vagrant is like, hey, man, I'm new in town. Can I go home with you? I don't have a place to sleep tonight. And Jack is like, Sure, fine, whatever. He takes him home, gives him food, water, place to sleep. Next day, the vagrant wakes up. Poof! Turns out the vagrant was an angel the whole time. The angel is like, hey man, thanks so much for helping me out last night. I really appreciate it. In exchange, you get three wishes. And Stingy Jack is like, all right. You see that apple tree over there? That's my apple tree. Anyone who touches that apple tree is my enemy and must be punished. When anyone who touches that apple tree to get screwed and the angel's like, okay. And Stingy Jack is like, for my next wish, you see my, my door frame right there? That's my door. I want anyone who crosses my door to get smoted right there on the smot, spot. And for my last wish, in case my first two wishes didn't catch all my enemies, I want any enemy of mine to thusly get smoted as well. And the angel's like, okay, fine. The angel leaves. Years go by, it's time for Jack to die. The devil shows up and he's like, are you Stingy Jack? And Stingy Jack is like, yeah, that's me. And the devil's like, yeah, those wishes that you made, the angel was like really not impressed by them. You're definitely going to hell. And Stingy Jack is like, oh man, but before we go to hell, can I just have one more drink of beer from the pub? And the devil's like, 
okay, sure, fine, whatever. So they go down to the pub and Stingy Jack is just throwing him back, having beer after beer after beer. And at the end, he's like, oh man, I forgot my wallet. Devil, can you spot me? And the devil's like, so Stingy Jack turns the devil into a coin and sticks him in his pocket and with a crucifix where the devil is trapped for years and years. Eventually, Stingy Jack lets the devil go and years go by. It's time for Jack to die again. Devil shows up. He's like, you son of a bitch. That was a really nasty trick you played on me last time. Um, you're going to hell. And Stingy Jack is like, aw, man, but before I go to hell, can I just have one more apple off my apple tree? It's like super free it's not gonna happen what happened last time it's right there you know we don't even need to go anywhere the devil's like oh, okay fine and stingy jack is like would you like an apple and the devil's like sure the devil reaches out to grab the apple turns into an apple so stingy jack turns the devil into an apple and eats him years go by it's time for stingy jack to die for real this time he's just sucked straight into the afterlife no visitors just plunked he goes to the pearly gates of heaven the angel at the pearly gates is like, are you Stingy Jack? And Stingy Jack is like, uh-huh. And the angel's like, screw you. You don't belong here, you're going to hell. When he gets to the gates of hell, the demon at the gates of hell is like, are you Stingy Jack? And Stingy Jack is like, yeah, that's me. And the demon is like, those were some nasty tricks you pulled. We don't want you in hell either. Here is this lantern made out of a turnip. You are doomed to wander the rest of your days as a ghost on earth with only this dingy turnip lamp to guide you. I will now perform a dramatic reading of the poem Romance of the Jack-O-Lantern from the year 1851. Then since Jack is unfit for heaven and hell won't give him room, his ghost is forced to walk the earth until the day of doom. A lantern in his hand he bears, the way by night to show, and from its flame he's got the name of Jack-O-Lantern now. And that is the legend of Stingy Jack. The legend of Stingy Jack is where the term jack-o'-lantern comes from. People in Scotland and Ireland would carve turnips, mangles, or rutabagas. When Irish immigrants came to America in the 1800s and saw these big old gourds, they thought that's a lot more space than a rutabaga, and the jack-o'-lantern was born. Anyways, let's see if I could carve a good turnip lantern to light my way through hell. I'm certainly no good at that. Let's move on to how pumpkin carving got so extreme. As I understand it, Halloween in America before 1915 was a regular fright night, and the celebrating public was far more likely to smash a gourd than to carve one. Pumpkin carving in the early 20th century was pretty simple, pretty easy. We're talking straight lines, simple faces, good, clean family fun. Let's take a look at a couple ads from the early 20th century. Here's a 1950s ad suggesting you drink beer while wielding a sharp knife. Great idea. So does this one, but at least it implies that you're drinking beer while carving a pumpkin for your kids to keep up morale. This ad from 1964 suggests that you will become a jack-o'-lantern if you drink this beer. And this ad surmises that being a jack-o'-lantern is preferable to being a woman with bad breath. By the 1960s and 70s, parents were letting kids use their own sharp knives to carve their own pumpkins, but everything changed in the 1980s. According to Smithsonian Magazine, Paul John Bardeen and his son John Paul Bardeen developed the first mass-produced pumpkin carving kit made available in 1989. The kit included a scoop, a poker, some tiny saws, and even pumpkin carving patterns consumers could follow. As a kid in the 90s, I remember we had this awesome kit with a zippy series of jack-o'-lantern patterns like Zippy Cat, Zippy Boofus, and Mr. Brow. He's creepy, right? To promote their product, Pumpkin Masters started a pumpkin carving contest. These kits and this contest kicked off extreme pumpkin carving. Today, competitive carvers use all manner of tools to achieve the perfect pumpkin, from power tools to potato peelers. 
But even if you're not trying to win a contest, pumpkin carving is a great messy way to bond with your friends. And that just about concludes my history of pumpkin art from the indigenous pumpkin to the legend of Stingy Jack to extreme pumpkin carving. Pumpkins have always had a place in the American autumn. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps support the channel and happy Halloween. Take care.